Hi, I'm Matt Gordon, and I'm here at McRim's offices in sunny South Florida, where today I'm going to be discussing multitasking and real-time kernels. This video, in which I'll be reviewing a couple of pseudocode snippets that illustrate important multitasking ideas, is the first in a three-part series that will show you how to write a multitask application using just a handful of kernel function calls. In the subsequent videos, I'll cover actual API functions from Micrim's real-time kernel, MicroC OS 3, and I'll present example application code that incorporates those functions. I'll begin my discussion of multitasking with a piece of pseudocode shown here. This example calls to mind the sort of application code that most of us have been writing for years. It consists of a series of function calls made continuously by a loop executing in main, as well as an interrupt service routine, or ISR. In a real system, there would likely be several ISRs, but for brevity, I've included just one here. The loop that serves as the foundation for this example runs whenever the ISR is not executing. In other words, it runs in the background. Thus, this type of system is often referred to as a foreground background system, with the foreground composed of ISRs. The simple architecture of a foreground background system is fine for many applications, and it has served as the basis for countless successful embedded projects. However, foreground background systems can be highly inefficient, and as many of us know, they are difficult to maintain. These are problems that a real-time kernel can help to alleviate. If we were to take our foreground background example and rewrite it using a real-time kernel, the results would likely resemble what is shown here. In the new kernel-based application, the foreground background system's loop would be replaced by tasks, two of which are contained in this snippet. Instead of running in a fixed sequence, these tasks would be scheduled by the kernel. The tasks would be assigned a priority or importance by their developers, and the kernel would use the priorities to determine which tasks should run at a given time. As the example indicates, the ISR would still exist in a kernel-based version of the foreground background system. Application developers working with the kernel, much like those who take the foreground background approach, use ISRs to respond to urgent events. However, in an application that incorporates a kernel, or at least in an application that incorporates a preemptive kernel, like MicroRIM's MicroC OS 2 or MicroC OS 3, interrupts are tied to the kernel scheduling mechanisms. Thus, the example ISR code that signals the USB task could actually cause the kernel to conclude the ISR by running that task, as opposed to the task that was originally interrupted. Now that we've seen what a kernel-based application looks like, our next step toward writing one is to learn a few kernel API functions. A multitask application incorporating MicroRIM's MicroC OS 3 can be written using just five kernel functions, and I'll cover each of these in the next video of this series. I invite you to join me for that discussion, and I hope that the introductory material I presented here was helpful. Thanks for watching.